It's what Rob Manfred wanted. The Dodgers and Yankees are set to square off in the World Series. So let's talk about the most interesting piece of data in this matchup. The Dodger and Yankee pitchers have very different approaches in terms of their pitch usage. Now, it may sound boring at first, but I assure you it's not, because what each of these teams are throwing has huge implications on which hitters are primed for success and which pitchers have a wider range of outcomes. In the 2024 playoffs, the Yankees are leaning on changeups and sinkers, and they're below average in terms of forcing fastball usage when compared to the average pitch usage of the last three postseasons. The Dodgers, on the other hand, are taking more of a four-seam slider and sweeper approach, landing above average on each of those three pitch types. Their four-seam usage is the highest of any team this postseason by a decent margin. And when you look at just left-handed hitters, the Dodgers are pumping 55% four-seamers, almost 20 percentage points more than the second highest mark. Now, this is a byproduct of the pitchers both teams have. That's no surprise. But these postseason trends hold when you look at the two most recent regular seasons. The Dodgers threw the second most four-seamers this season and were top five in 2023. The Yankees have been a top 10 team in changeup usage and a top half team in sinker usage in each of the last two seasons. These playoff trends reflect organizational tendencies rather than just existing as blips on the playoff radar. The big question here is what happens when you add in the context of a specific opponent that is a perfect counter to your approach? The Yankees offense has dominated forcing fastballs in the playoffs. No matter which metric you use, the Yankees are the best team against four-seamers, batting average, slugging percentage, ex-woba, run value, etc. And while Juan Soto is driving a lot of this positive performance, the Yankees have five other hitters who are performing at an above-average clip on a stat known as ex-woba on contact. Or put more simply, what damage do we expect the hitter to create when they put bat on ball? Expected damage is what I like to call it. Once again, we're not talking small playoff sample here. All of those five hitters, including Soto, were performing average or above average against four-seamers when you look at the final two months of play before the 2024 postseason. So if you're the Dodgers, what do you do? Are you sticking with the four-seam heavy approach that's gotten you to this point? A strategy that is based on two ideas. The first is gaining count leverage, and the second is making sliders more attractive off the plate. The basic premise for gaining count leverage is that four-seamers are easier to put in the zone. And if you look at batter splits based on count, a ton of damage is done when hitters are ahead. So don't get behind in the count. And it worked for the Dodgers for three seasons, from 2021 to 2023. But this past season, the Dodgers ran into injuries, their strike rate dropped, and so did their team pitching performance. I made a video earlier this year that digs into point B in terms of setting up sliders off the plate, and I encourage you to check it out if you're interested. The other angle for the Dodgers is to not stick with that approach. Do you concede and bring down that forcing usage back to around average and lean on other weapons? My bet is that they take the latter approach and concede some forcing usage. I'll predict that it falls under 35% for them as a team, just above average, but not that 40% plus that we've seen. And it may not seem substantial, but if every one of 10 pitches flips from a four-seamer to a non-four-seamer, that has pretty large implications across 150 pitches or more per game. What the Dodgers will throw instead of four-seamers becomes a classic chess match that boils down to pitcher-hitter matchups. Take Walker Buehler, for example. He misses drastically less bats when he faces left-handed hitters compared to right. So while you always have to worry about Judge, guys like Soto, Chisholm, and Verdugo are the matchups I'm keying in on more. My bet is that Buehler goes pretty heavy cutter curveball against the Yankees' lefties. Those are the two pitches in his mix that are allowing the least amount of expected damage and generating a good amount of whiffs. Yoshinobu Yamamoto is different than Bueller. He's been worse versus righties than lefties since he returned from the IL. So this puts focus on guys like Judge, Torres, Stan. And my bet for Yamamoto is that he leans heavily on his slider and his splitter to those right-handed hitters. Again, two of his pitches that allow very little damage and generate big swing and miss. But as you may have already picked up on with these two examples, Bueller and Yamamoto, what I'm doing is kind of cheating. I'm picking the pitches that have succeeded because they're generally used more in deep count situations. Consider the count damage matrix that I put up a bit ago. These pitches are good because they're used late in count 
And because they're used late in count, they're generally out of the zone more. So I'm encouraging something that the Dodgers really haven't done over the last few seasons. But I'm going to call the Dodgers bluff here. I don't think they could get past the Yankees offense by throwing 45, 50% forcing fastballs. I think they're going to change their stripes. And even if that means more runners on base, deeper counts for pitchers, shorter leashes on their starting pitchers because they're trying to elicit chase, I do think it's the optimal way to counter this Yankee lineup. Perhaps at the end of the day, what it does is puts more pressure on the Dodgers offense, which is a beautiful transition to what are the Yankee pitchers going to do to the Dodger hitters. As I mentioned earlier, the Yankee pitchers don't throw a ton of forcing fastballs, and they've been relying on changeups and sinkers. We just ran into a situation where the Dodgers pitching strength of throwing forcing fastballs didn't really line up perfectly with the Yankee strength of hitting those fastballs. And we have a similar situation here where the roles are reversed. The Dodger hitters have been great versus sinkers over the last two months of the season and into the playoffs. They're actually the number one team in baseball versus sinkers and our expected damage stat and run value in that time period. And much like the Yankees, this production is pretty spread out amongst a lot of their bats. The Dodgers have a bunch of hitters performing at an above average clip against sinkers with a strong mix of both lefty and righty bats. But unlike our other situation, I'm not going to totally endorse a deviation from the Yankees' main tendency because much of their sinker usage is coming from a few pitchers. A pair of lefties in Tim Hill and Tim Meza and Clay Holmes. All three of these guys are weird enough pitchers that you can make the argument their specific kind of sinker would negate the large sample we have of the Dodgers crushing more generic sinkers. Miza and Holmes both have high release heights and sinkers that drop a lot, which are two things that don't often pair together. And Tim Hill throws like this, which pretty much tells you all you need to know. The worry I have for sinkers against Dodger hitters comes more from guys like Jake Cousins and Clark Schmidt, who have pretty traditional sink sweep type profiles. And to some extent, Garrett Cole, who started throwing a sinker towards the end of the year and has brought it into the postseason. Schmidt and Cole both have cutters that I expect them to lean on more than usual over their sinkers. And Cousins throws 66% sweeper, so we might as well just see him push that to 75% or more. The Yankees also throw a bunch of changeups, and there's one iteration of that changeup that I think could work versus the Dodgers, the right-on-right -right changeup. It's a rarity in modern baseball. Right-handed pitchers threw below 5% changeups to right-handed hitters this most recent season. As a percent, it's been on a downward trend over the last five seasons. But the Yankees have been top two in the league with right-right changeup usage for each of the last two years, suggesting there's something about the pitch that they like. But like the Yankees' sinker-heavy tendency, most of these changeups are coming from a few guys. Or in this case, one guy, former Dodger Tommy Conley, who has thrown over 100 changeups this postseason and over 40 consecutively. Yeah, I said that correctly, 40 in a row. It's almost like he's paying homage to Lance McCullers, who once threw 24 straight curveballs to close out the 2017 ALCS. Luke Weaver and Luis Heal also throw changeups, both of them pretty frequently in right right situations around a quarter of the time. And for the Yankees, this is a clear advantage for them. The Dodgers have five hitters who all perform below the league average in terms of expected damage against changeups when looking at the last two months of the season and the playoffs. Will Smith, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Tommy Edmond, and Kike Hernandez. Otani, Lux, and Teoscar Hernandez have all been above average versus changeups. Hernandez is actually the only right-handed hitter to have barreled a Tommy Conley changeup this season, which is a fun nugget to consider if the two match up against each other in this series. The only thing that might back the Yankees off this strategy is that because right-right changeups are rare, your level of confidence that the Dodger hitters will continue to be bad versus changeups is likely lower than if you were talking about a more frequently seen pitch like a right-right slider. The theme in this matchup is that each team is going to be making a small bet on what they want to do to try and win. And because we're talking about each team being four wins away from a title, the pressure of all those small usage decisions in batter versus pitcher scenarios become incredibly heightened. But that's the beauty of the playoffs in any sport. If you stack a bunch of positive expected value bets across a 162-game season, you're probably going to end up in a good spot. But if you cut that 162 game sample down by 96%, you end up with a World Series matchup, potential of seven games. And in that seven game set, 
And we're not even guaranteed to get to seven games. Your variance is simply higher. So in the long run, you might win. But the reality is in this seven game set, we're not going to get to the long run. This is inspired somewhat by what Nate Silver wrote in his recent book, On the Edge, which I'm currently reading and I really enjoy and recommend. I think the question in this situation is how confident are you in deviating from the expectation to try and eke out a small edge versus your opponent in these really small samples? The reality is so much of this is unfortunately random, but that's what makes playoff baseball so fascinating because a lot of that randomness is tied to the human element. The reality is too, the Yankees and the Dodgers are definitely aware of basically everything I've presented in this video. The question becomes, are they going to do what I think they're going to do? Whether it be the Dodger pitchers deviating from forcing fastballs or the Yankee pitchers really leaning on changeups. That's the beauty of the World Series. We're going to find out. I'm excited to watch and I hope you are as well. Thanks for watching this video as always and take care.